It's time once again for the Maple Grove City Report. I'm Dave Kaiser from CCX Media. Thanks for joining us. And as always, Heidi Nelson with us, Maple Grove City Administrator. Welcome once again. Thank you. We have about a two-hour meeting to talk about from September 21st. We'll get to that in just a second. Also coming up, a lot going on in the city, so we'll pass along some dates and times you might want to jot down. Heidi, to the meeting on the 21st. Again, about two hours. Only one item pulled from the consent agenda, and that had to do with light the night for fallen maple. Maple Grove Firefighter. Give us a little background of this and the special day coming up. Yeah, so this was a proclamation for Light the Night for Fallen Maple Grove Firefighter Michael Pider, September 27th through October 4th, which is um, National Fire Fallen Firefighter Memorial Week. And mm -hmm. so during that week, um, we're going to be lighting up uh, the fire stations red and the town green red, and we encourage residents to do the same. Um, you know, this week happens every year, but this week, of course, it, or this year, of course, it has special meaning to us because mm -hmm. of the loss of Captain Mike Piter. So you're going to see those red lights out there and we'll do some special, um, you know, memorials for him that week uh, throughout the week in social media, whatnot, just to make mention of that. So that week coming up September 27th through October 4th. Very good. On to special business and a very special conversation about a friendly face to the city of Maple yeah. Grove for many years. Tell us a little bit more about Steve. Yeah, so we um, honored our retiring finance director, Steve Hauer, last night and um, had an opportunity to talk about his service. And he has over 35 years of public mm -hmm. service, starting first with the city of Brooklyn Park and then um, coming to the city of Maple Grove in 1992, where he now has completed 28 years of service, um, the most recent four as, as finance director. So um, was a great honor for Steve. We had um, the two uh, former finance directors, both Jim Knutson and Fred Christian, Fun. So that probably takes us back probably about 30 years of history <laughs> right. in finance directors, um, both who have worked with Steve to come in and talk about Steve's service to the community. Um, and then Terry Heaton, our financial advisor with Baker Tilly um, as well, provided some comments. So um, a nice uh, farewell to Steve. Of course, we'd love to be having a big cake and coffee and invite mm -hmm. everybody, family, friends in, but we're not able to do that. So um, this was a, a nice opportunity to do that. Steve's last day with the city will be September 30th and we just wish him all the best in his retirement. Certainly do. And on to another retirement, this time of a police officer. Yeah. So this is retirement of police officer Mark Carroll. And Mark has been with the city for 25 years. Um, played a number of different roles throughout his service as police officer, investigator, hostage negotiator, um, and then was regularly engaged with the community through Shop with a Cop and our National Night Out activities. But I think one of the most remarkable parts of um, Officer Carroll's service was his 15 years as a dare officer mm -hmm. so he spent mm -hmm. a lot of time in our schools and um, a lot of you know interact with a lot of students over those years and and still has relationships with a lot of those kids today so um, well-deserved retirement and um, we appreciate and are grateful for his service and wish him all the best in his next chapter you bet probably still receives a lot of high fives from the students as they grow up and yep. probably they have kids of their own moving ahead to the Maple Grove moments photo contest the winners were recognized and yep. a long list of winners here. Yeah. yeah, so Carol Morris, our communications coordinator, provided an overview of our Maple Grove Moments photography contest and so um, highlighted all the winners. All those have been shared out on social media. Mm -hmm. Each of those pictures was also included in the council packet, so if you want to go take a look there, you can. But you'll see all of those photos that were submitted over the coming year in our various publications. We try to really use yeah. those to represent um, the community of Maple Grove. So we appreciate everybody's involvement in, in this year's contest and go take a look at those pictures. They're yeah. quite remarkable this year. Hats off to the photographers. A lot of great work in the community. Next, an update on COVID-19 response and also some further discussion about something that's going on in the City Department of Health doing some testing. So bring us up to date on both of those. Yeah, so the Minnesota Department of Health is out in neighborhoods doing offering free testing, both for testing for COVID, but also serology testing for the antibodies. Um, and so you might have a representative from the Minnesota Department of Health come to your house and ask you if you wish to participate. It is voluntary. Um, we did provide some information out on social media just for people's awareness um, that if uh, somebody were to come to their door, they wouldn't be, you know, hopefully they could be aware mm -hmm. of who that is and what their purpose is. So um, Chief Bush covered that and then just kind of kind of where we're at with our, our you know, our, our numbers, our positive test numbers have gone up a bit. Our, our, our death rate continues to remain low as well as hospitalizations are, are kind of stable. So we're just continuing to monitor that and um, we'll provide another update in a couple weeks and see where we're at. 
Moving on, on the meeting of the 21st, next few items related to liquor violations, and we had a few additional businesses here to talk about. Yeah, we had quite a few failures this year of our liquor compliance checks, and so we had two remaining that we needed to talk uh, with those businesses about, and that was three squares in Tandor, so the council had discussions with each of those and um, kind of dealt with the, the, the violations there at the council meeting. Moving ahead to community development, we've talked about this multiple times, the CARES funding, and now it's mm -hmm. moving through the process. Give us a little recap of, yep. again, where this money came from and the process the city has to go through and some of the decisions that are being made. Yeah, so every city in the state of Minnesota received an allocation from the state of Minnesota, which was really federal dollars that came down mm -hmm. to the states through the CARES um, Act funds. And so um, it was based on per capita. The city of Maple Grove received just over $5 million to cover our COVID-related expenses. And of course, we've been tracking those since the very beginning of this in March. Um, the, the funds need to be expended by November 15th. So we've kind of tabulated where we're at today, um, made some projections about what that might look like through November 15th. And then um, if you recall at the September 8th work session, we had some discussion with council about the opportunity to provide some of our CARES dollars out to help the community. Mm -hmm. And there were things in the guidance from the federal treasury that um, were specifically allowed for cities to make contributions to. And those um, were issues around um, food supports for the community and rent supports, mm -hmm. housing supports for the community. Um, you can make a contribution out to your local hospital for their COVID related expenses. Sure. And then of course, we have done business assistance to our, our business community already. Up, right. um, already done 500,000 out to the community. Um, so as a result of the discussion on September 8th, the direction was to provide um, funding to cross for both housing and um, food supports. So $185,000 for food support. So that really for supports that food shelf operation for residents in Maple Grove. 315,000 for housing supports. So um, assistance with rent assistance or mortgage assistance, those kinds of things, really with the goal of trying to keep people in their homes. Mm -hmm. And then um, $400,000 to the Maple Grove Hospital to help uh, assist with some of their COVID related expenses and then we're doing another round of business assistance of five hundred thousand dollars out to the business community so that loan program um, opened up again this morning um, so Brett's been busy with I that and that outreach about that mm -hmm. program the qualifications have changed a bit opened up a bit so okay. previously if a business um, were to qualify they had to have been mandated to be closed by the governor's orders um, for this round of funding um, our, our criteria is that you just have to be have been negatively impacted by the pandemic. And so um, that money is available for businesses to apply. We do go through an underwriting process and then um, make those awards following that underwriting process. In addition, we have um, what's called a kind of a small grant of $2,500 that's available to businesses um, for modifications that they have to make going into the fall and winter season here. So thinking mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. restaurants and retail and service industry and how they might have to change their operations. And that um, $2,500, even if a business had received money in the first two rounds of business assistance, they can still apply for that additional okay. $2,500. So a number of actions here for the council to take to set all this up from a legal construct. So mm -hmm. we needed to establish a temporary affordable housing trust fund in order for us to transfer those funds um, to cross for those housing programs um, and then make some changes to our business policy later in the EDA meeting. But um, all those actions kind of put into place the motions to get that money out to the community and help with those issues. Um, for supporting our residents. Very good, you mentioned mm -hmm. the EDA. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the business assistance there. But as far as residents and if they might have a need with Cross or that Cross yeah. can help out with, do they contact Cross directly or do they go through the city through any process? How would you recommend people do that? Yeah, they should be reaching out to Cross directly. Okay. Um, so Cross has, um, with the food shelf, they have, um, you know, they have sort of a, a screening program that they go right. through for um, their clients, um, especially on the housing front. Um, they do get some information from you about income and rents and or mortgage, that kind of a thing. Okay. And those payments are made directly either to the landlord or the mortgage holder 
Luther. Um, so they have a pretty formal program around that, which is why, you know, we were so interested in partnering with them because they sort of have that structure and program in place. Um, and that's not really work we do specifically at the city. Right. And so it was, a, it was a great partnership um, to be able to do that. So Cross, um, you can contact Cross directly for those assistance programs. And I would guess potentially some of the funding might help them from a staffing standpoint because I can imagine they're going to be pretty busy. So again, go to, mm -hmm. I believe it's crossservices.org if people yep. want to find out more information through their website. Yes. Moving ahead on the meeting, update on what's coming up for community development. Light agenda coming up for the Planning Commission in September, but a little heavier agenda in October. Give us a yeah. little preview of that. Yes, we have a development proposal, Avery Park, um, that'll be coming to the Planning Commission in late October and then in front of the City Council probably later in November. Um, this is a project that's up off of Jefferson Highway, kind of a redevelopment project. Um, there's a, a, a greenhouse nursery there kind of up as you go towards 610 mm -hmm. on the, the the west side right um, and so this is an area for redevelopment and they're proposing to do kind of medium density housing some townhouses um, villas those kinds of things and of course there's residential single-family neighborhood to the west of that mm -hmm. and so um, I know there's some neighborhood meetings occurring this week um, where mm -hmm. the the residents to the west or anybody around there has been invited to come in but um, you know I think anytime it's challenging the you know when you're kind of plugging in a new neighborhood next to an existing neighborhood mm -hmm. off of Jefferson Highway so so there's some transportation concerns there right um, and then kind of the connectivity of the streets and how do we make all that work together so okay. more to come on this one this is just concept stage and so okay. um, we'll kind of take this in steps here and work through all of those issues with right. the neighborhood very good we'll yep. be here to take you through that process one other item in community development a little talk about Osseo schools and the new elementary school that we've talked mm -hmm. about as a possibility tell us how it is coming along. Yeah, I think the school district is just looking further at kind of what that site plan might look like and mm -hmm. what the considerations would be. We we do have plans to move some of the roads around up there a little bit um, as development would come forward um, that we would make some of those improvements and clearly, you know, the extension of 610 um, certainly would help us out there to get uh, a better transportation system in place. So continuing to work with the school district on how that site might lay out for them up there. Very good. Let's move ahead to Public Works and Engineering, a few items to talk about. One is the citywide cleanup for people that need some help of getting rid of some stuff. I think we have a few ways to do that. Yeah, so we're proceeding with our, our cleanup days. We've postponed some of that in the spring, right. um, the, the curbside piece at least. So. Um, Curbside pickup is Monday, September 28th. City crews pick up appliances and tires from residents' homes. Items must be at the curb um, no later than 7 a.m. on the 28th, and payment must re be received by 3.30 on Thursday, September 24th. So this is a program that you have to sign up for in advance, and okay. we have to know that you're putting things out there and that they've been paid for and that we're, we're coming to get them. And then option two is um, the cleanup day on Saturday, October 3rd. Um, residents can dispose of items from 8 to noon at the Public Works facility at 90.30 Forest View Lane. There's information on the website about what kind of items they do accept, but you don't need to make a reservation for the drop um, for the drop off day, only for the pickup day. Uh, very popular, very popular annual event. So yes. I think people are happy that is still being done in the city. One other item from Public Works, just Weaver Lake Road and I-94. Yeah. Just advice to people to be careful out there and yeah. be watching. Yeah, there's been a, a lot of you know they've been working on those corners there on Weaver so there were some lane restrictions for a while and they pulled them back and then they came back and right. so we're just you know Weaver has been a little bit of a challenge um, over the last few weeks and I think it'll continue to be that way so just heads up if you're traveling that way. Yep watch out for those cones they're moving sometimes. Your update from the meeting on the 21st you introduced a new finance director and mm -hmm. talk of the ongoing process. Here. Right yes yeah, so um, on the consent agenda earlier was um, the appointment of our new finance director Greg Stika and so we're really excited to welcome Greg. He'll be joining us on October 26th, currently serving as the finance director for the city of Chanhassen. So comes with a lot of experience. He's worked for the city of Shakopee and Minnetonka as well prior to Chanhassen, been with Chanhassen for 16 years. Okay. So we're really excited to get Greg on board. And um, during the interim period here between October 1st and the 26th, Sherry Robertson, our um, assistant finance director is gonna be Very playing good. that interim role. So okay. yep, good to get that process 
It is the election the season. We're going to talk about election processes in a few minutes, but we also want to let people know that there's candidate forums yes. happening if people are interested in finding out a little bit more about who's on the ballot. Yeah, so there's candidate forums going on for kind of all the races, county commissioner, the state rep, state senator, so all those races, city council mm -hmm. um, and school district as well. And so we have some information posted on our social media about those various candidate forums. The one for city council is going to be on October 7th at the government center at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. There they're not doing an audience for these candidate forums, but they are going to be live streamed Correct. on CCX Media. Mm -hmm. on, you can There's a link on our, our website, like where you would go to watch the council meeting. You right. can go there and get that link, and then they'll be available for replay, too. So if you don't catch it right at that moment when it's occurring, you're going to be able to go back and watch that candidate forum. So it's Excellent. going to be kind of a taped event. So Perfect. Um, yeah, make sure you catch all those uh, that are going to be coming up here in the coming weeks. Great. Yeah, more information on the city's website, also ccxmedia.org. You can find out more election information. National Night Out, again, things have changed mm -hmm. a little bit this year. Yep. What are you encouraging residents to do? Yeah, so we're going to have, um, we've encouraged resident neighborhoods to continue to get together if they feel comfortable doing so. We are cataloging kind of where all those events are taking place and then providing them kind of a, a party supply pack like we have in the Great. past and information that they can share out um, to the community. One of the special things that we're highlighting this year is um, we're going to have kind of an increased domestic violence awareness um, initiative in the month of October kind of in response to um, we've had a number of very difficult domestic violence related homicides in the community in the past um, six to nine months and so we're taking um, we're going to be kind of amplifying our voice if you will on the domestic violence issue here mm -hmm. in October so information will be included in those packets about that but yes those parties are going on we just won't be going around to those events one of the things we are doing during the day on October 7th is the fire department and the police department are partnering on a food collection initiative Great. for Cross, and that'll be at Fire Station 2 from 2 to 6 p.m. on October 7th. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of in place of the, the daytime activities. And um, if you uh, will have information on our social media and website about that Excellent. event as well. Final note you mentioned was Domestic Violence Awareness Month. That is mm -hmm. October. So again, you mentioned something's happening with National Night Out. But things happening throughout the month as well. Yeah, so we're going to do our purple light initiative again, light up the police department purple. Town Green will change from red for the, the firefighter memorial week to purple mm -hmm. on October 5th mm -hmm. for the month of October. There will be a candlelight vigil um, from 6 to 7 p.m. on October 7th, so right before that candidate forum. We kind of got a lot going on that okay, evening. Sure. Um, and the family of Maria Fury will be there to talk about their experiences with losing Maria to domestic violence. Um, so a pretty um, special month for us here in October. The October 5th agenda will have a proclamation. Maria's family again will be there at that meeting to talk about um, their experiences and, and what help there is in the community. So they're partnering with Cornerstone, which is the organization we work with for domestic violence assistance. And so hoping to get a lot of information out to the community to let people know they're not alone and there's help out there. Very good. A lot yep. of things on the schedule. So again, go to the city's website to find out more. Now we move to the EDA meeting on the night of the 21st, just mm -hmm. to update a little bit. We talked about this earlier, again, working with those CARES dollars, what had to be done on the EDA level related to that? Yeah, so we um, we had to provide um, to do the distribution of those CARES dollars from that to that housing trust fund and then out to care, out to cross. So right. just some procedural steps okay. that need to take sure. place. And then we also needed to make an amendment to our um, COVID-19 recovery loan fund program. So changing the those qualifications um, and then adding that additional dollars to the pot there for that so really encourage businesses to reach out if they're interested in that assistance very good and that wrapped up the meeting on the 21st again just under two hours next meeting we'll tell you about that in just a few minutes but let's cover a couple other things happening in town we mentioned elections going on mm -hmm. tell us about the absentee process what have you seen here in the early mm -hmm. days of it and what should residents know yes yeah, so we're absentee voting is well underway at the government center we're doing it in the council chambers this year so okay kind of right on the first floor of the government center. Lots of space there to keep things um, separated. So um, we started that last Friday. I think we had 215 voters last Friday, uh, 195 yesterday. So oh it's okay. on Monday. So it's been busy, but you mm -hmm. know, I think we've 
anticipate that activity to stay up throughout that whole time. But they're available um, from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. And then there will be some extended hours right before the election day on November 3rd. Very good. And you mentioned the food, food drive coming up, National Line Out, some great events in the city. The cleanup is coming as well. Let's talk a little bit about the Fall Festival of Trees. The Arbor yes. Committee is very, very busy with a lot going on. Yeah, so Arbor Committee usually does some events every um, in the spring around Arbor Day, and we weren't able to do those events this right. year. So they came up with some really fun events for the fall here. So we have the Maple Grove Arboretum Parade of Trees. And so at the Arboretum, there's um, you can tour a selection of trees that were handpicked by the Arbor Committee for their unique features and overall beauty. You can visit the Angel of Hope along the way. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can finish your tree tour by enjoying the waterfall at the north end of the Arboretum. And it is really stunning out there at this time of the year. Oh, so if yes. you haven't been up there, right. um, make sure you take a visit. And then um, the Parade of Trees map is available on the city website, but there also will be um, some printed maps available at the Arboretum parking lot. They're also doing a scavenger hunt. Um, involves eight different notable public places throughout Maple Grove, and each location, location has a tree designated. Um, so encourage residents to go out and find as many yeah. of the trees as they can. Information available about that on our website and then they want you to um, take pictures and post them to there's a special Facebook page oh, for this fun. event. So just something fun to get out and do yeah. um, this fall. And then we also encourage people to get out and visit the forest preservation area um, which has a number mm -hmm. of um, unpaved trails. It's 130 acres of mature forest with trails throughout and again they're unpaved so there's you know um, some accessibility issues yeah. there that you just yes. need to be aware of but um, it's located along Vicksburg Lane just about a half mile south of Bass Lake Road. Yeah, neat area. Yes. So great opportunities there to get out and enjoy the great outdoors at the perfect time of the year. Yes. A couple items to, to update you on on activities happening, some facilities. Let's talk about the community center pools. How are things coming in the maintenance world? Yeah, so we're having the heater replaced for the pools, so that's good, good idea. heading into the winter <laughs> right. here. Um, so uh, the outdoor pool is closed for the season, of course, but that indoor pool will reopen on October 5th once that um, heater project is completed. All right, and if people are thinking about lessons for swimming, you can still get in on that how do we get some lessons yeah so registration is open for fall swimming lessons with private semi-private and group options um, park and rec offers classes from a variety of levels and ages with daytime and evening hours to choose from and all that information about how to register is available on the website Another fun activity Park and Rec has been busy planning is a drive-in movie. When is this coming and what's the great movie choice? So Friday, September 25th on the big screen is the movie Big Hero 6, which is rated PG. Great. It's in the grassy area out in front of Lifetime there, those two big fields. Admission is $20 per car. You do have to buy a ticket online um, and you can get that on the Park and Rec website. Um, show starts at sunset. All right, so some of those activities for the whole family. Here's one just for the kids. Kids create classes. What are these? Yeah, so through um, Kids Create Studio, Parks and Rec is offering a wide variety of arts and crafts classes, including ones for the holidays. Classes are um, for kids ages 18 months to 12 years old, and then again, registration is available on the website. All right, maplegrovemn.gov. We'll show you that in just a second. Your final note is the farmer's market continuing on, but things are changing just a little bit with the timing because of the season. Yep. What's at the market? Yeah, so this week, Thursday, September 24th, this is our last day where we have our hours from 3 to 7 p.m., Beginning in October, then we'll trim up those hours from right. 3 to 6 p.m. But um, the weather looks absolutely stunning for yes. Thursday. We just looked ahead, and it looks like they're going to have another great week. But we have all kinds of great things going on out there. A lot of the fall fruits and vegetables, canned goods, salsa, jams, pickles, all those kinds of things. So we really encourage people to get out. It's been a great summer. It's, I think it's worked out really well, um, yeah. even during this COVID pandemic time. And so congratulations to the staff and, yeah. um, as they go into the fall season here. All right, get out and see if you can enjoy that. Heidi, thanks again for the information. You're that welcome. is it from the meeting on the 21st and a little run around town of what's new. Let's leave you with some information you might need to know. MapleGroveMN.gov. Many times we mentioned the website today, so if you'd like to find out more information about some of the things happening in the city, go there. Next council meeting will be October 5th, 730 at the Government Center. Phone number you see at the bottom of the screen. And our viewer response line, 533-1710. Questions or comments for the program, certainly do leave us a message. For Heidi Nelson, I'm Dave Kaiser. Thanks once again for joining us.